Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about management and dealing with mediocre programmers. So let's get into it. So the question in question here was basically, Frederick, if a manager hires a mediocre software developer that is getting the job done, but not really up to scratch with other developers, but they're still not, you know, in that in the firing range of things, like it's not worth it to the company to fire them. How, how do you deal with that? And this is a, a very, an oddly specific question. Maybe somebody's been there before. Uh, I know that uh, well, I have experienced this, but uh, it's, uh, it's actually not that tricky. You will pretty much have to do the thing that most people do when they're working in some sort of team. Now, it is exceedingly rare to work at a company where every single human being is as productive and as enthusiastic as either, uh, every other person on that company. What usually happens is that you have promoters of some sort, you have people who are actively seeking to benefit the company in some fashion. You have people who push things, you have these enthusiastic types that really believe in the mission of the company and they believe in the, the mission of the, their team and so forth. And they're the sort of per people that most companies want to engage with. They are the people that you want to, to hire as much as humanly possible. And then on the other side of the spectrum, you have the negative types where they draw, they basically pull down the attitude. They're not that social, maybe. They, I'm not saying that they're hostile because that's not really what it is, but they usually are, they're not very engaged. They have, this is just a job for them. And some of them are really pessimistic and things of this nature. You've probably met someone like that in your life. And the, bulk of everybody, the bulk in the company is made up by these indifferent types, or rather not indifferent, but they are in, in the middle of the spectrum where they may not sacrifice a significant amount for the company. I mean, they're not, they, they are, it's a job, right? They enjoy their job and they like their coworkers, but they're not the evangelists, they're not pushing things. And they're on the other hand, not the sort of negative people that just hate everything and everybody, right? And these are, most of the people that you're going to work with. So when you have a software developer that will kind of get the job done and kind like isn't like super productive because th this idea guys that you may have gotten into your heads that that Facebook and Google and these more like public companies are pushing that they only hire the best, they only do this and that, that is absolute bullshit for most of the industry. There is no company out there apart from these sorts of companies that has that level of like, how do I put this? Like that they, they're, they're in a sense selling an idea that they only hire the best. And maybe they are trying to, but there is no way to guarantee that the person that you get in is always, that is, that they are gonna be as productive as everybody else. It's, it's unfeasible, it's impossible to have every single human being in a company being ex as talented as the next person. So wh when you, as a manager, deal with this sort of thing, you deal with it like any team, as I said, it's, it's a re like the person is a resource. And as a manager, your job is to basically leverage that resource or to engage human beings to make the environment that they are working in into the environment where they will be the most productive. Now listen to this closely. It's not about trying to like complain or force somebody into being something that they're not because you have the resources that you have. What it's about is that you cr is to create a situation where you can make that individual or the team as productive as humanly possible. Now, if the person was so bad, this, this theoretical person, that they were a damage to the team. Now, the manager would have raised that with his or her superiors in order to, to basically cut out the issue and have someone else come in. But if they're not at that level, that means that they are producing some sort of value. They may not be the favorite of the group or they may not be the most productive of the group, but they don't have to be. They have to get the job done. It's, um, 
it's actually something that quite a lot of you will notice where when you go into diff different sizes and sorts of companies. I have been in a company just like that where the management, they didn't give a shit about how talented you were. They didn't give a shit about how enthusiastic you were or how hard you worked. None of that mattered because they weren't the least bit interested in the development that was taking place. All they wanted was a body, a body of a person that could do the unit of work. That's it. They didn't care if it was high quality work, low quality work, as long as it worked, that's it. And you will be surprised to see how often this happens. So I'm sorry if Google and Facebook and the stuff that you've seen on the internet has sold you this idea that every single person that works for these, these sorts of companies are just immensely talented and they're enthusiastic and they're the life of the party and like all that stuff because it's bullshit. Most programmers are not going to be the sort of people that just loves every second of everything and they go down in salary and they live for the code, they breathe, co breathe the code. It's not true. Most of them are mediocre. And whatever, whatever that means, actually, I, it's, it's by comparison, there are more mediocre programmers than there are truly talented super coders. But we talk as if that's the only sort of person that we want in the company or that the only person we hire. But the sad fact is, guys, that you still need to ship code. And a mediocre programmer produces code. And if you don't have the ability to just hire the best of the best, then that's what you're left with. So what I want you to take away from this is that mediocre best or the be, like the best programmers or the mediocre programmers and so forth are the people that are barely uh, on like the hiring scale of things. They all produce a value. They are resources they can produce they, they, as long as they can produce the results that the company needs and if you in, in that case you can't fire them then as a manager that's the only thing you can do you can only do your job in other words you need to guarantee the stakeholders or as, to the best of your abilities of course that you will ship in a given time frame that you will deliver this product with the restrictions that you have it's like having an engine when you're working with developers i mean the best case scenario is, of course, if you just have super talented developers and tons and tons of resources, because then you can deliver really, really quickly. But that's just not the case. You're left with the developers that you have, and by getting to know them and creating an environment where you, they can perform at their best, that's pretty much all you can do if you want to have an efficiently working software team. Have a great day.